Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'll be continuing my analysis of the game's history of the Chess Tweets library. So this is a game um, put about six months ago, I think, by Nimix, who is white against the chess community is black. And the opening, I don't know if I've ever seen this one before, but I like the creativity F4 and D5, and now C4 immediately. And, um, okay, an interesting, interesting thought here. And um, don't want to go too deep into this uh, because uh, you'll, you'll rarely see this kind of stuff. And so anyway, going going straight on with it. So d4, and um, now we saw e4. So I guess the idea being um, queen takes takes and, and knight f6, or or simply bishop f5 really to prevent the bishop coming here. I mean that's maybe something I would go into. Because it seems like, you know, if white's going to play this stuff, well, make this pawn backwards on e3 and squeeze, you know, seize that e4 square. But anyway, let's uh, go going on with the regular game. So after e4, uh, black plays e5. Seems reasonable. And after d3, bishop b4 check. Definitely like, definitely like bishop b4. Bishop d2. Uh, and now after bishop takes, obviously knight takes is going to drop a pawn so queen takes d2 and i e takes f4 here i just okay i mean i i understand you don't want to allow f5 so it, it does make sense um okay yeah i mean it, it makes sense you want to open up that e5 square sure so now queen takes f4 and knight c6 still pretty strange opening and after knight a3 black plays he played a6 which I don't like. I, I think he could have just continued with a simple bishop e6. And if, if white wants to try to harass him, uh, you know, hitting that c7 square, simply rook c7 and then a6. You know, something like that. And, you know, it's just better to develop your pieces than, than react to what your opponent's planning to do. So the move a6 I thought was kind of a mistake. I think it was a little too timid. And now knight c2. And now knight g7, sure makes sense. You want to um, go ahead and grab that e5 square. Although maybe another plan would have been to play knight f6, knight to d7, and put that knight on c5 where it's going to be a monster. But you're going to need to play a5 to to control that b4 square, and thus the c5 square. So anyways, knight g7, not a bad move. And now g4, this is a little too much. This is a little too extreme. Um, there's just, you know, I guess the idea was to prevent f5, but it, it's just too weakening, and there's just no point. I mean, you just, you know, why not just knight f3? Or, you know, maybe g3 and, and put the bishop on g2, knight, knight e2, you know, castles. Um, but g4 is just absolutely way too weakening because blacks, you know, first of all, let's take into the Let's take into consideration the positional considerations. So, I mean, uh, black, the bishops are on light squares. So white has all of his pawns almost are on light squares. And black is playing on the dark squares. So positionally, g4 is a busted move as far as that goes. And, um, you know, you just, you don't want to give up. Now it's just, you know, g4 and, and you're giving up this f4 square and... It's just like all of these dark squares are weaker now, you know, conversely. So g4, I'm not not too impressed, but uh, I guess, you know, he wanted to prevent f5. So now knight g6, good move, and queen g3. And here, knight ce5 was played, and I don't really understand why. I think maybe h5 was a solid idea. Possibly just bishop e6. Queen d6 or d7, either one. Possibly queen f6, really. I, I like that more. Uh, and, and just castle and just play chess. Or even just bishop e6 and b5. There's a lot of ideas, but this this knight uh, knight c5 idea, I mean, I, I, the idea was to play c5 as the, as the follow-up. But c5 doesn't really matter. I mean, actually, the pawn is better on c7, so you could put a knight 
somehow, you know, even just rerouting a night totally to go to C5 is, you know, C5 is a money square for a night. It's controlling the center, and if you can just reinforce it with A5, it's going to be a great night, great square for a night. You see this a lot in the Benoni. White, white tries to put a knight on C4 and attack, attack the black's pawn structure. So anyway, knight c5 is quite a mess of arrows there. Knight c5 and bishop e2. And so now we're starting to see positionally white is having some troubles. All these pawns being on light squares and his bishop being on a light square is, is really not helping him out too much. And black's knights can really exploit that. So after c5, knight h3, and queen a5 check... Um, Okay, black did get this check in, and, and white has been trying to play energetically in with b4, and now c takes b4, and after castles, and um, maybe h5 here. You know, I, I just don't know why not, because black controls this e5 square with his knights so well, and this is really putting a lot of pressure on white's center, and white's position in general, and all of white's pawns. You know, the knight on e5 is a, is a monster. So... Maybe instead of black castling here, a move like queen c5, centralize a little bit more, maybe a5, maybe put the bishop on e6, and uh, I, I really like, you know, h5 just immediately in this position. Why not put a little more pressure on him? I mean, you know, I, maybe, okay, maybe takes, you know, immediately this doesn't quite work tactically, but it will work in the future almost certainly. And I, I just, I don't know, you know, my castles, okay, I mean, it's not that bad. You know, it's just, just trying to get his king out and develop, play normally. So knight f4, knight takes f4, and queen takes f4. And now with bishop e6, black is lining up a tactic to take that pawn and play e5. Or, or d3, rather. Supported by the knight on e5. So bishop e6, and now rook fb1 to, to take this pawn. But he walked right into a tactic. White... This, this just seems weird why white didn't just take d4. Now, I do understand maybe this was the concern, or maybe something along those lines was, um, you know, but white is, is not doing that bad here. I think he's down a pawn or two. So one, two, three, four against six. So he's down two pawns, but this pawn is doubled. I don't know. Uh, just maybe put pressure on, the, on this d4 pawn is weak. And that g4 pawn obviously has become a weakness. So I can't take pawn moves back. So I always want to be careful. I'm trying to get a little too crazy with the pawns. And after rook fb1, bishop takes c4. Great, uh, very nice tactic. Also possible in this position. The first thing I looked at was knight takes b4. And, I, and maybe that's the move for white here. And it just solves his problems. And um, obviously the knight's going to come to d5 and be very strong. If black takes, pawn takes. And white has essentially solved all of his problems. I believe material is equal in this position. Okay, White hasn't solved all of his problems. He's still got this positionally busted pawn structure and bishop. That's the problem. But at least he's got a chance of being able to draw. And he's got a reasonable chance. He wins the pawn back. So I think Knight takes b4, a little tactical awareness there. That had to be the way. And maybe, maybe the reason he didn't do it was Knight takes c4. Possibly a little counter shot. But, um, hmm... I don't know. I mean, it's just the tactics just don't seem to quite work out for White. So those are the things I would consider in the position. Um, knight takes, knight takes b4, possibly a3. Um, I don't know. It's you know maybe rook f d1 was an idea. This is a this is a very tough position because White has made a lot of weakening moves, and he's been a little bit too careless about the positional considerations with his light square bishop so after rook fb1 bishop takes c4 and the position starts falling apart so knight takes b4 was played and now just calmly bishop e6 and the weaknesses still remain on d3 and g4 specifically g4 not not really doing a great job protecting white's king and the super the super powerful knight on e5 remains for black so that's um is not not boding well you can say and now bishop e6 and knight d5 and i i think there was just a i, I don't know bishop bishop d bishop e6 knight d5 okay yeah and an important tactical point to consider if the hasty bishop takes d5 and maybe this is what black was banking on 
Queen takes e5, and all of a sudden the tables have turned, and White's just going to win. He's going to win a piece. So you got to be a little careful. It looks too good to be true. It probably is. So after knight d5, a little intermezzo, a little intermediate move, knight d5, knight g6, and all of a sudden after queen f2, um, you know, black's position is again solid, and bishop takes, pawn takes, and queen takes. So taking stock after bishop f3, the end of this little combination, queen d6, and rook takes b7. So what's going on? Well, g4 is looking silly. It's looking sillier than ever. Um, black has still got this monster knight on g6, can come into any of these squares around uh, around white's position and attack, as well as white has a weakness on d3. On the flip side, what's going on for white? Well, I mean, look, looking at, uh, I mean, he does have some compensation for, you know, he's down a pawn, but he has a bishop on a great diagonal. So the bishop's doing good. And um, this rook on b7, at least for the moment, is active. So after rook takes b7, black played knight f4, which is pretty direct. And, you know, there's no need to, you know, the knight can always come back and go to e5 if he wants to put pressure on the, the d3 and g4 squares. So a matter of taste. Knight f4, pretty direct attacking move. Now, this obviously threatens knight h3, winning the queen. So queen d2, certainly a logical move. Maybe the queen can come swing around and try to invade the position a little more. So after queen d2, queen d2 rook a b8. And now rook e1, which seems to not make any sense. Oh, <laughs> uh, it just, I don't get it. Um, but, it, I mean, it's getting tough to recommend stuff for white. He's only down one pawn, but this pawn on g4, the super powerful knight on f4, and this bishop is, while it is on a good diagonal, the diagonal is not so important right now. So maybe the move was to play, um, you know, try to maintain this, this, this active place for the rook, but even then, rook b8, and, um, it, it seems like black should win this game nine times out of ten. So maybe trading, maybe trading, or maybe black. I, I would probably prefer not to trade and as white's king is exposed to play something like rook c8 or possibly rook e8. Um, but anyway, white here plays rook e1. I, I guess maybe he wanted to defend against that idea. And after rook takes b7, bishop takes b7. Now rook b8 by black um, def definitely makes sense, and white tried to um, he tried to hold on tactically and it didn't quite work. So maybe the idea between behind rook rook e1 was to play rook e4 and put pressure on this d4 square, and maybe try to loosen up the knight squares on e5 and f4. Um, didn't quite work. So rook b8 and now rook e4, and obviously if takes takes. Well, now black is only up one pawn, and that would be a huge positional blunder to give up that great knight for this bishop, which is okay, but, you know, considering the pawns on the light score is not so good. So after rook e4, knight e6, and white committed the last, uh, the last error of the game, queen c2, I guess, um, you know, check would be a worse blunder. However, black has the great reply knight c5, and that's going to be a devastating fork. So here, um, here, Nimix, uh, playing as white, he resigned. The chess, chess tweets community played a good game, definitely solid, uh, reacted well to the pretty, pretty strange opening sequence. And um, black played a good game, sure. So you want to be careful with, with moving your pawns too early. G4 was, um, you got to be careful about that. And also about the positional considerations of the position. Having your pawns on light squares. Yes, uh, a lot of beginners think these pawns, um, the bishop on the same color can defend it. But really, they're just going to they're gonna be in the bishop's way. And they're going to be a big weakness. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. And uh, thanks for tuning in.